Hey, John, how are you, man? How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing excellent. Wipeout came back last week, the big premiere. Awesome show. Came back to monster numbers, too, dude. It was really impressive to see that after such a long layoff. We haven't seen the show on the air in such a long time. You come back co-hosting the show. Great success. Do you feel a sense of satisfaction when you see success like that for a show like Wipeout with the monster numbers that it did? Or is it on to the next thing type of thing, or is it a bit of both there? I think it's it's well said that it's a bit of both. Um, you, I'm trying to be better every day about allowing joy in my life, and you know, uh, I really have a lot of a lot of heart and soul in, in Wipeout. Nicole and I really had a lot of fun making the show, and we were really very much uh, involved and into it. And um, to, to know that a lot of people were entertained by it, it, it gives you the same sense of satisfaction as a uh, you know going out in the WWE ring and, and having a good match, whether it's on television or it's untelevised or it's uh, a large event like WrestleMania. Just to know that <laughs> for the audience that watched they were entertained that's um that's a good plus but it's uh those who know me know i'm not one to rest on my laurels so i certainly do enjoy the moment take a lot of satisfaction from that knowing the hard work that went into it and i hope the season uh continues at that sort of pace but um well ho- hopefully it's, it's good news that we can work on a bigger better uh re-debut of white Hub. Yeah, 100%. I think the cool thing about the show, too, is that it's so it, it's similar enough to where it gets the Wipeout vibe from years ago, but it's also different enough, too. With your involvement with the show, was it like a conscious effort to make it, you know, to put your own spin on the show and be different than the host that came before you? Well, you know, we wanted to keep the spirit of the show lighthearted. Uh, I think that the people at TPS realized that Nicole and I were... So you know, we, we both were passionate about also being in front of the contestants. I think that's important. Um, man, I, I wish I wish we had a little bit more of that. Uh, I think that's really special. Um, but I think Nicole and I both enjoy hosting, and the fact that the show hasn't lost its ability to laugh at itself, I think that's what makes it special, because if you break it down, you, you have a, a very difficult obstacle course and people taking these spectacular falls and us as hosts and us at home enjoying that. So it's, it's, it's usually something that you turn away from, but, you know, ep- epic fails are epic fails for a reason. And I think the, the fact that the contestants of Wipeout embrace this, we as hosts embrace it, and the viewers embrace it, it really leads for a very, very fun experience. And I... I like that. I like that they've made the, the course different, the gameplay a little different. Like you said, they've kept the roots of it. But it, the thing I like most about it is it hasn't lost its ability to laugh at itself, which makes it okay for you as a viewer to laugh along with. Yeah, 100%. And I think the cool thing, too, is that with yourself, for WWE fans and just fans of John Cena in general, we haven't seen you do a ton of hosting inside the WWE world. You've hosted a variety of stuff outside of the ring. Uh, in WWE, you never had your own talk show segment for the most part. You were always a man of the people, always a promo guy. Uh, how much did WWE, in, in cutting promos and doing stuff like that, scripted promos, unscripted promos, prepare you for this opportunity? I will expand your question and say that my tenure at WWE has prepared me for much more of my life than you would ever imagine. That, that mm-hmm. goes greatly outside of the parentheses yeah, I mean, it, it's incredible, too, just with what we've seen so far with the show, your work on Wipeout. It, it, it's like just a seamless transition there. It, there's just no uh, it, there's there's no difference between you and the WWE world seeing you on Wipeout, and you just took to it like a duck to water, so to speak. It's been really cool to see you in that role. Um, if there were any WWE performers, past or present, that you think could fare well in the Wipeout world, who do you think it would be? Oh, man, I think Ricochet would do really good. I think AJ Styles would do good. Uh, the entire cast of 205 Live, uh, any any of the high flyers, the, the course is made to test test your agility, uh, gymnastics ability. I really, uh, yeah, I, I would give it to that group uh, or anybody that, that falls close to that that group. I think um, contestants like myself, some of the some of the, the more heavyweight guys, I don't know, or the the guys who are uh, Michael Cole's the unorthodox, I guess, is the right word for that. I think we'd have more of a challenge. 
Yeah, no, definitely. I'm not sure if I can envision The Undertaker doing the obstacle course and getting hit by the big red balls and everything else that comes with it. But, you know, like you said, I think a Ricochet and AJ Styles would, but, you know, would be a perfect fit for that show. Um, with Wipeout itself as well, you know, it, it, it's honestly like kind of a, uh, with Wipeout, you can kind of apply it to real life too, people wiping out left and right. As long as you get back up and finish the course, that's all that matters. You know, you talk about that a lot on your Twitter and uh, all the positive messages you put out there, which I'll ask you about in a second. But is there any one Wipeout of your career, whether it be, I mean, you could take it literally and say like an in-ring botch or something along those lines or a situation where you had to find yourself to kind of battle back, finish the course, that type of thing. What would that be for you? Oh, I, I'm, heck, man, I go through those daily. Um, I think the most consistent one, and I was just speaking to somebody about this the other day, is my love affair with weight training. Uh, that's been, I started when I was 12, I'll be 44 this month. So that's 32 years of failure every day. You, you walk in there with high spirits and... I've never been involved with something that you get so excited about failure. You push your body until it fails, and then you bask in the in the beautiful exhaustion. So, as far as failing uh, on a regular basis, I think um, my love affair with weightlifting started me uh, familiarized me with failure and uh, familiarized me with the concept of through failure comes uh, true success. Absolutely. And I mean, that's only one of the, you know, some of the words of wisdom that we've heard from yourself on Twitter over the years. It seems like every day when someone logs into Twitter, such as myself, we see a new positive message from you. It's always a great way to kick off the day. You always help someone get through the day way more than I think you know, which is awesome with the reach that you have. A little bit about your approach to Twitter. I know you followed a lot of your fans, which is awesome. I just want to hear a little bit about that and your approach to Twitter over the last couple of years, because it's really inspiring. Yeah, well, you know, we always talk about, um, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a few questions there. We always talk about followers. How many people are following me? Um, I, I just think it's important. Uh, I, I obviously can't speak to, to everyone because I just there's just not enough minutes in the day. But you want to talk about letting someone know that you're there. I, I, something as simple as hitting a follow button that uh, I can t- I can do a few minutes. You know, at a time, if I'm uh, traveling in a car or I have some moments to myself or just crafting a message for the day, um, I can follow a group of people that uh, their message, you know, my message resonates with them. They've been following me for a while. Um, they seek out positivity and motivation. Uh, they're, they're willing to lean into uncomfortable subject matter. Like, um, I, I enjoy following people. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful for everyone who, you know, looks at those messages because it's the reason, uh, among other things, that the, the two new books are out, which are, I'm very proud of those because it's kind of a culmination or like a greatest hits of four years of, of Twitter journaling. But um, that, I think, it, I think following folks and, and listening to folks and, and recognizing their existence is just as important, if not more important, than people following you. Um, and my approach to social media is to keep, I, I, people say, well, I like it, I don't like it. I enjoy uh, what I do with social media because it keeps me creative. Um, I use Twitter, obviously, to, to promote things like anyone else. So right now, I, I feel bad. <laughs> I'm actually probably going to apologize to everybody soon for the amount of promotion that's going on. But there's, you know, there's just a lot of, good stuff that's going on in my life, and I appreciate that. There's, there's, a, there's been a whole lot of dry spells and a whole lot of not-so-good stuff, so I'm just trying to, you know, um, run, in, run in the shoes that are fast right now, I guess. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Um, but I also use it as, like, a daily journal, and uh, it, it's very much on my mind that I should be accountable for what I say, and I think a, a lot of the existence on social media is um, brash, it's abrasive, it's argumentative, and I think it is that way because it gives us a lack of accountability. We kind of just say whatever we want and not not be held accountable for it. Uh, it to me, it's, it reinforces my self-worth. It, me, it means more to me. If I can reach anybody, that's great. And I, I appreciate you saying that, you know, it, 
brightens up your day, and, and hopefully a lot of people feel the same. That's cool. But I, I do it for me. I do it for me because um, of a lot of things. It, it, uh, like it, it increases my self-worth. It makes me accountable. If I say all these things and, and the, the world can see them, I can be someone who is just all talk and BS, or I can be someone who, you know, walks the talk, which I think is, is very important. And uh, I didn't get a reputation in WWE for being the most gifted technician. That's far outside of my grasp. But certainly, whether people enjoyed what I did or not, I think that they would say that I walked the talk. I, I love the company I work for, and I, I say I love, not love, and work, not work, uh, because I... You know, I have been, I am, I always will be a WWE superstar, and I don't think there's anyone that that can debate uh, my passion or values for the for the product, the company, or or, or kind of how I live my life. And this is just an extra degree of accountability that uh, that it kind of gives me. It's, yeah, definitely. That's such a great approach and such a great way to look at it, too. And I think really inspiring for a lot of people to kind of look at it as, you know, you're just doing it for yourself and that it helps a lot of other people in the process that if you kind of write it down, hold yourself accountable, then, you know, a positive attitude and a positive mindset results in positive results. So it's always a great way to look at it. But you mentioned being a WWE superstar. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you. We got WrestleMania this coming weekend. I know you said at the beginning of WrestleMania season, obviously you're busy with everything right now. Wipeout, the Peacemaker show, and everything else that's going on. Suicide Squad uh, promotion and whatnot. Um, this will be the first WrestleMania that you're going to miss in person in, I don't know, 15, 20 years since WrestleMania 18, 19. How crazy is it to not be a part of WrestleMania season this year for the first time in almost 20 years? No, it, it's great um, because, you know, uh, we, all have, we all have a window. You know, we all have an existence. And I think um, I love listening to, to Steve Austin talk about, you know, his window. Um, my goal when I stepped foot in the WWE was to leave it better than I found. And um, it's, it's really great be able to see an event and it, I almost had the best transition you could possibly have because my last two WrestleManias were a very interesting almost cinematic type uh, match and before that I was a fan I got to sit in the crowd and see WrestleMania so I got to see product I got to see a stadium full of fans and it was beautiful and like I felt at home I'm, I'm always a fan and I'm going to watch the two nights as a fan and I'm going to enjoy and I won't feel any regret I won't, I won't fear, feel as if I'm missing out I'm currently in Vancouver shooting a show for HBO Max that is a spinoff of a character that no one's seen like you want to talk about opportunity man that's I don't know why I would want to be anywhere else. I want to be where, I'm, where I am doing what I'm doing. That's why I've made that choice. Um, I, I, I think it's really special, and I think it's, it's brilliant. And, and it just, we all, we all think, you know, they're never going to go on without it. That's not true. And it's just, it's more reassuring to me to see not only the WWE has a life after me, which is inevitable for sure, because it is then, now, and forever, but that its life is thriving. There are so many great storylines, so many great matchups, and the event will be great. And, you know, for the two nights, there's going to be an audience for the first time in a while, and I, I'm just re I'm really excited for the people who are there, the people who can watch, which I'll be one, and certainly the performers. Uh, and it's called WrestleMania. It's not called Cena Mania. You know? <laughs> so I've, I've been a part of and only a part of that part is over and it's time for uh, this is this is an epic one I, I, I i'm really looking forward to it actually yeah it's going to be a fun one we'll say uh, final two questions for you john when when you let them know that you won't be a part of wrestlemania this year i know last year you were a part of it before that you were the doctor thugonomics which i was there for it was such a great moment when you came out to confront elias with that character uh what's that conversation like do you talk to vince on a regular basis what's your relationship with him like after you know 20 years after debuting in the company uh, vince mcmahon to me is, is um, 
more than anyone can realize. He's a, a close friend, a mentor, a father figure. A father figure. Um, man, he's uh, he 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 means a tremendous amount to me. I don't, I don't know if I'll ever be able to contextualize how how much I love him and how much he means to me. So uh, it's it's also appreciative that someone like that understands what I'm doing and, and approaches my choices with empathy rather than apathy. Uh, the guy who runs the joint isn't saying, well, well, screw him, get down here. It's on a weekend. I know you're not working. He approaches those choices with empathy of, this is a great opportunity for you, John. You're always a part of this family. And if you do well, we all do well. And I reciprocate the empathy, of course, wanting wanting the WWE to thrive. That's why I invested so much of my blood, sweat, and tears. I I don't want to I don't want to see it fall off. I want to see I want to see it be everywhere. I want to see it be larger. I want to see it have more success. I want I want people to look back and not say like. Oh man, it was great when. I want people to say, "Oh, that you know, he kind of he kind of opened the door for what's going on now." Yeah, absolutely. Again, a great way to look at it too. Final question for you, John. You look at the success of a guy like Roman Reigns, who's kind of followed in your footsteps in the WWE world. What he's doing right now is the heel. I know you've mentioned before you're beyond busy right now with all the projects that you're currently a part of, and every single thing that you do, whether it be a movie, a show, hosting. You're so damn likable. I mean, everyone always talks about, oh, we should have gone here all these years ago. But you're so damn likable. It's almost hard to envision you in that role, although I know it almost happened about a decade ago. When you see a guy like Roman Reigns go heel, first of all, what are your thoughts on that, if you've caught any of his work as the head of the table stuff? And do you ever see yourself, uh, you know, experimenting with that down the road now that you're in a different stage of your career, whenever it is that you come back? There's a lot there. Uh, first of all, Roman is... is walking in his own steps, he falls in no one's footsteps. I know what it's like to, this happens every time a marquee uh, attraction is, is moved on. Uh, I went through it, you know, everybody uh, said it's Steve and The Rock, and um, I understand that. But Roman is, is crafting his own path, and I think it's very important to, to say that, and he's doing a great job. I feel this is the best he's ever been, and that comes with comfort. I don't know what got him over that hill but he is over that hill and that's a very important one to jump over um, it happened to me in the transition from ruthless aggression guy to the hip hop guy where I just had zero fucks to give and went out there comfortable with who I was and, and comfortable even if it failed t- taking brave choices and those, those brave choices never stopped and aren't, aren't stopping today as I continually try to challenge myself. Roman has hit that point. That is, for audiences, that's a beautiful point. Because now he's going to challenge himself to entertain audiences in ways they didn't think he was capable of. So I'm, I'm very, very impressed with Roman, among other people in the WWE roster, how brave they've become. And I, I honestly think it may be because there's no live audience. This would be the toughest obstacle for me to overcome, but I think it really has brought the best out in people because they've had to to redefine themselves and they can't lean on the energy of the audience on their performance. It is them out there. So sometimes performers can go out there and fall to hear the noise. They hear a few people cheer and they think it was fantastic. Now they have to be in the product and they have to see the results and they're, they're really, you can't use that as, 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 a, as a blindfold, I guess. And, and it's actually it's brought the best out of people. And I, I can't wait for people to return to arenas. But I think this spell has been good for a lot of performers because it really it, it, it's, they've been faced with that um, obstacle of searching people within themselves to find out who they really are. And that alone, who you are, defining who you are, uh, dictates the performance success of him. John, I appreciate the time. Thanks for being an inspiration, my man. Graham, thank you very much. I'm sorry to rush you off the phone. I usually give everybody one last question when they get shoot off the phone. 
No, it's no worries, John. I know you're a busy guy, so I appreciate it so, so much. I, I really do. I look forward to talking in the future. Thanks for the time today.